Hey guys, welcome back to the Swamp Scott Podcast. I'm your host, Ree, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Zodiac and astrology-ish things. It's an interesting topic to me because if you go all the way back in Genesis at the very beginning, in the days of creation, God himself says that on the fourth day, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, to be for signs and seasons and things like that. And our entire way of life, our entire way of measuring time, everything is literally framed around those stars and seasons and everything. I mean, as this episode is coming out, we are going into fall. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, um, it coincides with some sort of equinox probably or something. I know there's like the spring equinox, there's like a winter equinox, there's all of these things come from like the position of the stars and the sun and pretty much every pagan festival is surrounded by some sort of celestial event that they're worshiping or using to predict something, right? And I find it interesting because it's, I mean, there's this fine line, right? Like God himself talks about there being signs in the heavens. And the fine line, saying it up front for those who uh, don't make it all the way through the video, the fine line being whether you're worshiping God's creation or whether you're worshiping God, the creator, right? Some people think that the, the stars themselves have power to do this, that, or the other, or that the that is controlling your future. Like, because you were born in this month, you have to do this or you have to be that way. That is where you're going off into paganism and not what God has told you. You're going off into divination. Um, but like the fact that there are stars, like the sun comes up every day, that's how we know it's a day. God himself said, that's how we are able to see that it's today, it's daylight. Um, and the same thing, the moon goes into its phases and that's how we know a month has passed. That's for signs of seasons and things like that. But there are also signs that are given throughout the Bible that are also from the heavens. There is a verse where it says that the heavens bear witness or the heavens declare things. There are verses, for instance, people talk about the star of Bethlehem. And guys, if you have never researched the star of Bethlehem and what that actually is, um, there are some very interesting theories about what actually happened in the heavens. And it does have to do with the constellations and the planets moving here and there. Um, it's not just, oh, there was this big bright star or it was a meteor or something like that. There are some very interesting things. I'll probably link some of that in the show notes if you are interested. But just the entire concept in general of looking up into the stars and seeing something. I mean, people literally navigated themselves across the globe without GPS, without Google Maps, without even MapQuest, just looking at the stars, finding the North Star and you know trekking across the globe and so i think it's very interesting then when you start to see what else the world started associating with the stars now as i've been perfectly transparent about um within the podcast on my blog i am no stranger to uh, fiction and movies and subject matters that may not necessarily be Christian in nature, things that I wouldn't necessarily recommend reading or partaking in as I've gotten older and grown in my relationship with uh, God. <laughs> but I do have experience reading certain things that I probably should not have been reading. And one of the books that I read a long time ago is heavily based on the Chinese Zodiac. It's called there, well, there's two books. The first one is called Aeon and the second one is called Aeana. And it's literally about, you know, the, the year of the dragon and the rat and, you know, the tiger, I think the pig or whatever. But they have their 12 things and it, it's similar, I guess, in a way to Western astrology. And I was curious as I was thinking about that, I was like, the number 12 pops up a lot in the Bible. It pops up a lot in other cultures. And I knew that we had astrology on a Western side. You know, you have like your Libras, your Cancers, your Scorpios, 
I don't know, Capricorns, whatever, all of that stuff. And people follow horoscopes and guys, the horoscopes are always generic. It's always like today something happened and you thought hard about what happened. And tomorrow will be a ramification of what happened today. <laughs> like if you ever actually read like all of the horoscopes, they will all sound like they apply to your day. That's how they work. That's how they work. Um, but nonetheless, um, I thought it would be interesting to see if other cultures had some sort of zodiac tradition as well. Because like I said, God himself did say that the, the stars are for signs and for seasons. And it makes sense that every culture seemed to find something happening out there. And it's, I mean, just the constellations in general, like there are literal, we are seeing pictures in the stars. I mean, granted, there's a lot of stars. It's very easy to connect dots when there are a lot of stars, but like, they're so, like if you, it's probably hard if you are younger, especially if you grew up in the city because the stars are faint now. Um, and again, I feel like I always end up bringing up prophecy, but there are verses about the stars being dim and the stars going away and all of that stuff. Um, but this, when I was a kid, I grew up out in the country and you could see the stars so clearly. And some of the things that, you know, we have found as constellations or we call constellations, when you look in the sky, they just, they just pop out. You're just like, oh, look, there's the Big Dipper you know, oh, there's Orion's belt, like, but like, they're, they're very prominent in the sky. So for them to make these images, it's just, you know, it just seems very convenient, right? It, it seems a lot more than coincidence to me. And so nonetheless, most cultures have also seen pictures in the sky. Most, we may not have had exactly the same names because we all spoke different languages and things like that. But it's no surprise the Western culture and the Chinese culture are not the only people to have come up with some form of zodiac system. I found a whole list of cultures that subscribed, subscribe or subscribed to some form of astrology type of zodiac thing. And what's interesting is, um, I feel like I'm going on some tangents. I will list links and things in the show notes for those who are curious. I found, um, just to cover one thought at a time, I, I found um, that there is Vedic um, astrology and zodiac symbolism so the Vedas are the uh, sacred texts of the Hindu religion. So there is stuff that comes out of that. Um, I want to think there is something in Burma. I want to think there's like a Burmese um, astrology thing. I really should have taken better notes or I should at least have them in front of me so that <laughs> I could uh, go through all of them. But there was an extremely long list um, there, you know, there was a list of things that are currently being practiced. Um, and then there were things that they know were practiced, but are no longer practiced. And again, like many of the topics we have been discussing this season, it's all over the world. It's on, it's in the East with, you know, in India, in China, um, in, in many Asian countries, it's over here in the Americas with, you know, for instance, like the Mayans or the Aztecs. I can't remember which culture, but there there were, you know, things of astrology there. And then, of course, it goes all the way back into the heart of the Mediterranean with people even making connections between the animals that represent um, the tribes of Israel, even into um, if you go into the book of Ezekiel, when it starts describing, uh, I think they describe cherubim in Ezekiel maybe seraphim, but it's a type of angel that Ezekiel sees when he's in vision and they have different heads. They have four different heads and um, each head is represented by a different animal. One, well, one head, one face is a human face, I think, but the others are something else. And you see these animals occur throughout um, prophetic visions. You'll see them in Revelation. You'll see them in Daniel. 
Um, but there are these beings, these angelic beings that are, that appear to be like these creatures. And when people went back and compared, um, they believe that these are the quarter points or the midpoints in what Western astrology ascribes to. So there's still linkage or connections and tetherings here and there that are very interesting when you start going back and thinking like, how did this person get from point A to point B? How did, how did all of these images come to be? Why do we think this? And so that's where kind of some of my, my thoughts started out. Um, and then I lost my train of thought. <laughs> where was I going to go with that? Um, yes, personality. So one of the biggest things about astrology, and I see this on social media all the time, is people trying to ascribe a particular personality to people based on what sign they are. So they have, and even more so, it goes into even more spiritual things, right? So like the signs are based on like your water sign or a fire sign or an earth sign. Um, and so, you know, these are like the elementals or the four um, cardinal points. You have the four points of the earth. You have, I mean, that just goes into like elementalism and all kinds of like occult things as well. But essentially people try to use these things to describe what kind of person someone is. And if you talk to anyone from like the science community, of course, they will immediately tell you that astrology is foolishness. But there are so many things like it that are actually considered science and psychology. You have, for instance, like the Myers-Briggs test. There is um, there are other things. I've been reading a book called The Road Back to You. It's about the Enneagram. Um, there are lots of different things that people have studied to try to assess people's personality. And while, you know, I don't think anyone, you know, subscribes 100% to any of those things like the Myers-Briggs or uh, the Enneagram or any of the other things that are out there, they do exist and people do spend time, like there are literally peer reviewed published papers on Myers-Briggs and things like that. And it seems like people are always trying to peg the personality type. Now, of course, with something like Myers-Briggs, there is, you know, like questions that you answer. There's, there's a questionnaire that helps you get to the answer. It's not just, oh, I was born in this month on this day at this time of the day. And therefore my personality is set. And I was destined to this personality because of that. These types of tests allow for some types of fluctuation. As someone who has taken the Myers-Briggs test multiple times, my results have varied and they didn't really solidify until I was in my late 20s. Um, that's when I started getting consistent uh, answers on that test. So they're, they're slightly different, but I, I still find it very interesting that we're always getting sucked back into this. There's something we can just put a pin on it and that's your personality. These traits are how you, um, you know, th these are the traits that you will manifest. And interestingly, you know, I took a test similar to this when I first went to college, they have a, a career test and it assesses your personality, your likes and your dislikes. And it tells you what kind of career you should pursue. And for some people they would take it and they'd get like a list of maybe like 10 things or some people would take it and they'd get like a hundred things or whatever. I took the test and I got two career choices. <laughs> I got exactly two career choices when I took this test. One was math and the other was computer science. Uh, if you don't know, I have an undergraduate degree in math and a PhD in computer science. And they very much fit my personality. I definitely fit in with my fellow computer scientists. I am a little socially challenged. Um, but it's okay. And so, um, I find it interesting that I was able to take that test and it was actually that spot on and that accurate because <laughs> yeah, like 
literally mankind has been trying to put a pin on how to identify a person's personality and destiny since the beginning. And so I just, I just find it interesting because every culture has some sort of zodiac tradition. And then even in modern science, you know, they're still trying to do these things and they're still trying to find out how much of our personalities and stuff are based on uh, our experiences or are based on, you know, nurture, right? Nature versus nurture. How much of it is genetic? How much of it is, you know, when you're born? I don't really know. I didn't have a lot of time um, to put all of the information together. Some of these things I feel like could be like whole books. Um, and I have to stop myself because my episodes get long. And if you let me, I would definitely probably dive in if I was making like an episode a month. Let me not even lie to y'all. Life is just busy. Okay. I have a full time job and I'm also in the process of moving again. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a whole nother podcast or in a whole nother episode. But I, like things just get very hectic and very, you know, life happens. So that's why it's hard for me to stay on schedule. And that's why sometimes my videos are a little bit more meaty and a little less meaty because I don't necessarily have the time to put into it that a full-time YouTuber would have or a full-time podcaster would have. I just try to do the best that I can. But if I had an infinite supply of time, I would probably write a dissertation for every episode because that's just how my personality is. And, you know, I'm not, so I'm not sure. I say all that to say, I'm not sure if people have been doing research on um, variations in people's personality based on when they were born or when they were conceived or um, you know what time of day they were born. I'm sure there are studies and probably the reason why science, the scientific community frowns upon astrology is because they haven't found correlations yet or ever. I don't know because I didn't go that deep into the research, but it's a very interesting concept. I can kind of sympathize with why people have made that idea or how, why people have been obsessed with it. Um, even for myself, I've, you know, you meet people and they have like a similar feel, a similar vibe. And then you start to find out that they were born around the same time. Or, I mean, I can honestly say a lot of my close friends were born in clusters around the same dates, around the same time. There is a time period in August where I literally have a friend whose birthday is every day. It's just back to back to back. The same thing in June, which is also my birth month, June and July, um, right there at the end. Um, and then again in like November, like most of my close friends have birthdays that are really close to each other. So I see how people easily get swayed into believing that there is something to this idea that when you were born and, and how the stars were aligned, have something to do with your personality or your destiny. And then, like I said, from a spiritual perspective, it seems that everybody knows something about how the stars play into that. And, you know, it's one to ponder on. I definitely would like personally to do more research. Like I said, I do think there is a very, very fine line there and a very distinct line that you have to be careful with. If you are a believer in the Most High and you are committed to following Yahweh, you must remember that you are worshiping Yahweh, not the stars, not the sun, not the moon, none of that stuff. And no matter what they're doing up there, he is the one controlling things. So it doesn't matter if the moon is in retrograde or whatever, whatever is happening. He is the one controlling your destiny. He is the one that makes changes happens he's the one who moves or moves you so i think that's important as believers to keep into perspective not to be out here chasing horoscopes and things like that but it is an interesting thing because he himself did say that they are for signs and they and he uses them in prophecy all the time so it's not complete foolishness there is something to be said about being able to read the stars and read the signs and everyone around the world seems to agree. So that is what I have been looking into this week. Leave me a message if you have additional info or you have 
things that you would like to see. Uh, just a reminder, I do always take a break after October. The break might come, the, the season may end a little early because as I said, I am moving and I will probably be packing up and moving at the end of October. But I'm gonna try to record in advance. Hopefully that will work um, so that the last episode of the season will go through October. Bear with me if that doesn't happen or if episodes are a little late as I go through this this, this one last move to my permanent place. Um, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you again. Bye.